Thank you for having me today. I will be glad to answer a few of your questions. My name is Frank Dyson. I was born in Leicestershire, England in 1868, and I became the ninth Astronomer Royal of England in 1910. I am the director of the Greenwoods Observatory in London. Before that, I was the Astronomer Royal of Scotland from 1905 to 1910. I've been studying the stars and their unique patterns for a long time. The project we were working on involves studying a solar eclipse to see if Albert Einstein's uh, general theory of relativity was true. The project involved a lot of careful planning and timing on my part. We were trying to prove Einstein's recent general theory of relativity paper that he published in 1915, which states, gravity is not an actual force, but instead a geometric distortion of space-time, not predicted by ordinary Newtonian physics. This distortion changes the trajectories of objects moving through space and even the paths of light rays as they pass close by in the massive body. I wanted to prove his theory that if gravity wasn't an actual force, but instead a distortion of space-time, then during an eclipse, the sun would bend starlight to make the stars appear to be in a different spot. Einstein's theory and equation also help us determine how much light is bending based on the mass of the object. The path of the solar eclipse could not be seen in North America, in Europe. So I had to organize two expeditions so that we could study the total solar eclipse. The first expedition was off the coast of Brazil in a town called Sorbel. And the second place, was on an island called Principe off the west coast of Africa. Both expeditions departed from Liverpool on March 8, 1919. The first expedition to Sorbel was led by the Royal Observatory at Greenwich. And since they had uh, extra time, uh, they decided to travel up the Amazon River to explore a little bit and view the, uh, the scenery there. And they finally arrived on April 30th. The second expedition to Principe was led by members of Cambridge University Observatory, and they arrived at the observation site in Principe on April 23rd, 1919. The Great War had just ended in November of 1918, with the Treaty of Versailles formed uh, in June 1919, and in early January 1920, the League of Nations was established. After the Great War, the American economy was surging, it was booming, and there were many social reforms that were being made. Henry Ford invented the assembly line in 1913, women gained the right to vote in 1920, and the invention of using credit to buy products were all happening in the decade from 1910 through the 1920s. A number of people were involved uh, in this experiment. Uh, the company of Greenwich Observatory that went to Sorbel included Andrew Crumlin and his more junior colleague, Charles uh, Davidson. The Sorbel group was met by eclipse parties from Washington and Brazil. And the members of the Cambridge group that went to Principe consisted of Arthur Eddington, the observatory director at the time, and Edwin Cottingham. Now, my role in the project was to organize the two expeditions by finding the right time and place for the solar eclipse to have the best possible view. I also organized funding for the project through the Royal Society 
RS and the Royal Astronomical Society RAS. The results of the eclipse changed the way that physicists now and scientists look at the Earth. Planets and space, planets and space, the stars have moved from their previous positions in the pictures taken before the eclipse, and they moved roughly the same distance that Einstein had predicted in his general theory of relativity paper, proving that uh, the general relativity was correct. This revolutionary discovery that gravity was not merely a force, but instead a distortion of space-time. This made Albert Einstein a celebrity almost overnight and would remain one of the world's greatest physicists. We use for equipment 13 inch astrographic lenses with a focal length of a little over 11 feet. The object glasses were attached on arrival to hollow steel tubes made by Harvey and Company with the lens at one end and the photographic plate holder at the other end. And then, excuse me, mounted horizontally so that the sunlight could be reflected into them by a 16 inch diameter flat mirror. Then there was another flat mirror used to follow the sun to help see these stars better. It was at a 45 degree angle so we could get as many stars as possible. Overall, it is one of my favorite experiments, and I am glad to have been a part of changing the way we view the world and space. Thank you.